We've all seen it all over social media, all of these influencers claiming to have transformed their skin with microneedling, and then we have practitioners inviting you into their clinics to get those microneedles early on in your 20s. Is microneedling really what it's amped up to be? What if I told you that the treatment that's actually promising you to reverse aging might be what's actually accelerating it? I feel like I'm gonna get so much hate again for this video, but someone's gotta say it. here hello and welcome my name is Nadia Benchakroon I created the functional beauty approach to healthy skin addressing root causes not just masking symptoms with short-term instant gratification interventions microneedling is one of those treatments that deserve deep discussion and there is so much nuance to it so hang in there with me I'll try to keep this video at about 10 minutes microneedling definitely has its place in the anti-aging discussion however a lot of side effects are not being covered because of course it needs to be sold as the miracle treatment so you can keep coming for those treatments so today I'm going to break down what microneedling is what it actually does for the skin the different types of microneedling the the long-term side effects that nobody's talking about and who might actually benefit from it. There are a few people that can use it safely or at least with less risk. So let's begin by identifying what microneedling is and what it does for the skin. Microneedling is a collagen induction therapy. It creates hundreds of micro punctures in the skin. The body perceives the damage. It triggers an inflammatory response. Then fibroblasts rush in to start the repair. And that repair looks like collagen induction. So there is new collagen and new elastin that are created. It's the same thing your body does when you have a scar. So if you have a cut, a visible cut, your body is gonna trigger that response and it's going to close that cut up by creating collagen and elastin. And sometimes that scar heals a little bit raised. Let's put a pin in that. We'll go back to it later. A lot of people find the idea of creating that injury and hence the repair with the production of the collagen and elastin really great. It's really exciting because you're gonna create so much collagen, not so fast. The skin does not distinguish between controlled and uncontrolled trauma. It responds with what it knows best and that is scar tissue. And that's the minor detail that most practitioners just glaze over because all they want you to hear is collagen induction. Well, that scar tissue is made of collagen type three, which is denser, firmer, but weaker and less elastic than collagen type one. And that's the collagen you want to preserve. So while you may see that denser, firmer skin, even glowing skin right after the swelling subsides from your microneedling with repeated treatments, what you're doing is accumulating micro scarring in the skin. The skin becomes less pliable, more textured, and depending on how good the practitioner is, you might end up with uneven collagen induction. So you're smoother and firmer in some areas and not others. Now let's unpack the different types of microneedling because they all carry different risks. All right, so the first one, most common one also for at home use is the derma roller. So you roll it onto the skin and it's gonna puncture it at an angle. And that's the worst type of puncture because it can cause those tears. It can cause uneven collagen induction. And you might ask, why do I have this? I even have one on my website. I like it for the hair because for the scalp, it's a different story. It's easier to roll back and forth. And then of course, we're doing that to promote hair growth. And that's very different from the face. When you do that, the potential result, which is hair growth, will cover any bumps or potential minute scars that you might see over time. And then you have the microneedling pens, which enter and exit the skin in a straight line, potentially going deeper, but also with less potential for tears and scars. So these are preferable in professionals' hands. However, it doesn't eliminate the problem of repetitive trauma to the skin. And then you have the third type of microneedling, and that is RF, so radio frequency microneedling, which you get in an office, and that's done with heated needles, essentially adding heat to the injury. And the idea here is to contract the collagen fibers for more tightening. But heating tissue during active injury does not only increase inflammation in the skin, but also starts melting that fat underneath it. 
So when you combine heat with needles, you're stepping into a double-edged sword. Your temporary firmness at the expense of long-term resilience of your skin. So while I see a time and place for these two tools, I do not recommend RF microneedling at all. Never. Now let's talk about where the nuance actually comes in. Practitioners often recommend microneedling sessions every four to six weeks starting in your 20s. This of course secures a lot of money for them because they're building up the clientele. However, for you, what are you doing enjoying the skin in your 20s? You have plenty of collagen to go around. In your 20s, there are so many tools available to you to continue to induce that collagen, to take care of it, and to not destroy it. So really, the very best way that you can hold on, maintain, and regenerate new collagen is to apply all the tips that I always share here on this channel, which are your sunscreen, red light therapy, consuming high quality protein, high quality collagen, taking your vitamin C, which is a precursor to creating new collagen, taking your minerals. I mean, just look at any of my videos about reversing aging or firmness, and you'll see plenty of advice there. You do not need to be causing injury that early in life because what's happening now, if you're doing these treatments every four to six weeks, imagine the scarring that you would accumulate into your 30s, 40s and beyond. So what exactly happens beneath the surface when you overdo microneedling? Each session triggers inflammation and the production of collagen type 3 in the papillary dermis, which is that upper layer of the skin. Initially, it looks like rejuvenation because the skin looks more compact, it looks tighter, but repeated treatment creates dysregulated, disorganized collagen fibers and cross-linking, which scientists call fibrosis. Fibrosis does not look like physical scars at first, because remember, these are all tiny, tiny punctures in the skin, but it starts looking like roughness, resistance to skincare absorption, or chronic dryness. Eventually, when you overdo it, it can even lead to that waxy, thickened texture. And let's not forget, microneedling also disrupts your lipid barrier and skin's microbiome. This can increase sensitivity, potential for melasma and hyperpigmentation, especially in medium to darker skin tones. And once fibrosis sets in, reversing it is nearly impossible. So now, knowing all of this, who should and who shouldn't get microneedling? In my opinion, no one should get microneedling under the age of 50 unless you're doing it for scars. And so if you have healthy, even skin, you can go about collagen induction in so many different ways that I cover all the time on this channel. But for those consumers that have textured skin, like those pitted scars and so on, and you're looking for that smoothness, microneedling can solve that issue if done by a good practitioner and within a limited time. So you're going in for those treatments until you achieve your results and then you stop. So when I speak to my clients about this, I generally recommend going to a skilled practitioner that uses the pen only when you have scars or textured skin that you need to improve. And then you would just get enough sessions for you to get your results and then you stop. I never recommend microneedling under 50 years old for collagen induction, again, because there's so many ways that we can induce that collagen production as long as we have that estrogen in the body. I tend to be more lenient with the roller. Again, I use it myself for hair growth. Not a big deal. It's covered with all this hair, so it's fine to me. It's worth it as long as I'm using it correctly. You know changing the roller often and sanitizing. So if you have good practices, if it's controlled and if it's for the scalp, I don't see an issue. But for the face, you got to go to a practitioner and keep your sessions limited until you achieve your results and you stop. Now back to the face. As we age, that risk benefit ratio changes because we almost become a little bit more desperate. <laughs> I'm feeling it now being 48 years old. I'm more open to microneedling, although I'm not considering it right now. I feel like there's so much more that I can do to maintain my skin and its firmness. I'm considering HRT, and so uh, keeping an eye on my hormones because when you get that estrogen replacement, that's the precursor, that's the signal for collagen production, so that helps maintain the skin. So really, fingers crossed that my collagen continues to be dense into my 50s, but let's say I pulled 
all the stops and then I'm seeing sagging still, then I would go to an intervention like microneedling because at that point, if I'm doing the treatment for 10 years or so, it's not the same as if I am doing that treatment since my 20s because if you're doing it since your 20s, by your mid thirties, you'll probably have a lot of uneven texture. Bottom line, and this applies to a lot of trauma-based treatments, I avoid them and recommend that everyone avoids them in their twenties, thirties, forties. It really becomes dependent on the person, the level of their aging, whether they're menopausal and so on. So hormones have a lot to do with when you start introducing those treatments. So the rate by which you age, I think, should be taken into consideration when you are considering these trauma-based treatments. And frequency also matters. So every few months, yes, but every few weeks, it's a lot for the skin. Just know that you're not just making collagen, you're also making scars. So before you book your next session, ask yourself, am I rebuilding or am I breaking down my skin? And just know that there are so many options available to you that don't require in-office sessions. Understanding how your biology works is the first step towards great skin. It is not booking an in-office treatment. And that's what this channel is dedicated to. Please consider becoming a subscriber or a paid member that's gonna support a lot of the research that we do here to bring you unique and biased advice. If you've gotten a microneedling session, please share your experience because the comments are for all of us to learn from each other. And until the next video, be well, be safe, be beautiful, take care.